coach and uh, defensive genius, as Bart Scott told oh, us. Yeah. True. Rex, we just had Bart here. He, he, he said that you are a legitimate defensive genius. There's nothing even to debate. You and Dick LeBeau. Well, you know, it's funny. I, I was blessed to obviously be around my dad in all those years. Look, I can't do anything else, but I can damn sure coach football, and uh, especially <laughs> on defense. So, you know, I was dyslexic for some reason. I don't know. I think it might have helped me, uh, you know, because, it, you know, as weak as I was in some areas, uh, spelling, doing different things like that, I was strong and, and – uh, uh, being creative, and I think that's that's probably what you know what Bart's referring to. Did you know Rex that Bart wants to slap Brian Schottenheimer in the face? He thinks he cost you guys a trip to the Super Bowl. Yeah, see, I don't think I, I don't <laughs> I don't feel like that at all. I mean, we all are upset we couldn't knock it in there, you know, from the one yard line against Pittsburgh. But you know what? I thought Brian did a heck of a job uh, with us, and you know, it just. Yeah, God, you just get close, and we just couldn't. Uh, you know, two years in a row, we're knocking on the door, and we just couldn't. We just couldn't get through. And you know, it's uh, it's unfortunate, but you know what? We we gave it the best shot we had, and I thought Brian did a good job, of course. Now you know, you know, Bart also wants to slap John Idzik in the face. Yes, yeah. for cutting him. Well, I got no, well, I got no comment there. <laughs> <laughs> I think well, Rex wants to slap him yeah. too. Well, by the way, <laughs> but Rex, good news. Bart said nothing about slapping you in the face. No, quite, he, quite the opposite. No, you know it's funny. There's uh, like you know that was that was my guy when I when I, when he came to the Jets. I brought in Bart. I brought in Jim Leonard. I brought in Marquise Douglas. And we went from 23rd in the league to first in the league on defense with those guys. But I knew, like, they knew what I wanted. You put those, none of those guys are drafted, by the way. You put every one of those guys in that locker room with the talented players that we had and just brought them together. And like I told Bart before, I said, you know, Bart was always my guy. There's no question about it. But he was also, he knew what I wanted. He, he knew that I wanted the entire locker room to be my guys. And he cultivated that, that thing uh, uh, for me. And when I left, believe me, every guy that ever played for the Jets was like that. All right, you have the San Francisco defense. How do you defend Patrick Mahomes on Sunday? Well, I would defend them way different than they're going to. Um, okay. But... I think they're going to go about it the right way for them. And what I mean is they're not, they've never been a game plan specific team. They're going to run their defense. Um, and, and they're just going to, they're, they're going to know what they're trying to defend. And, and that's the way they're going to approach it. This team is built like those old Bill Walsh teams. And what it was, Bill Walsh, uh, believed, he told me this many years, many, many, many years ago. That you had to have the have the ability to rush the passer late in games and fourth quarter of games, and that's why he always activated uh, nine, ten defensive linemen. The Niners activate nine, nine D linemen uh, right now, and the most of, of any team by far. And so they took that type of blueprint that Bill Walsh did many, many years ago. And by the way, guys, they have five first-round picks in their defensive line. And four of those guys were pretty much top seven picks. So they are super talented, and I think they're going to rely on that pass for us. They're going to play that. Everybody says that Seattle cover three scheme, uh, whatever it is. But... They better get there, and they know their best shot is to do it. If they would go out and try to create a brand new scheme and uh, and, and mix things up, that doesn't play to their strength. Their strength is being simple, uh, being sound, and letting that front four uh, take over games. You know, people look at games that might compare to this, and they go the Seattle-Denver uh, Super Bowl, and they got to Manning, and the Giants, and the Patriots, and they got to to uh, to uh, Tom Brady. But Rex, this guy's different. I mean, this guy's not going to be in that five foot behind the center drop uh, pocket. He's going to move around. So, can you really depend on hitting him? I mean, he's not going to be there to be hit. Yeah, I mean, you have to. Uh, but the I think the critical thing, Michael, is that you better not pass the darn quarterback on your pass rush lanes. Like, so I've seen it over and over right. um, where Nick Bosa is a great player. 
but in no huddle situations where they're just they're not coordinating their pass rush games, he'll just fly up the field sometimes and against movement quarterbacks, Russell Wilson, Lamar Jackson, uh, Kyler Murray. And five they played five games. He had no sacks. So to me, it's not necessarily about sacking the quarterback, but you better keep this guy in the pocket and collapse the pocket and and uh, make him throw off balance throws. You cannot let this guy out of the pocket also. So it's easier said than done, but that's the first thing. It's not trying to sack him, you know, where you got three damn guys trying to be the MVP of the game. You better be disciplined in your games. And I think that's going to be critical in this game. In both Kansas City playoff games, Rex, they got off the slow starts, uh, spotted the opposition multiple possessions. Can they afford to do that against San Francisco? No. If they fall behind, if you're down 24 or nothing, I can promise you, you're not beating the 49ers. <laughs> I love that. For so, sure. For you know, sure. I'll go out what about 10 limb. nothing? <laughs> you know, say that, but, what about 10 nothing? You no, know, I think it's still going to be, like, here's the crazy thing. Kansas City sitting back going, we got you right where we want you. <laughs> you know, and, and that's the scary thing about them. I, I don't think that, um, uh, you know, at any point you feel safe in this game. But here's the point that nobody talks about. The San Francisco 49ers, we're talking about their great defense and, and all this, okay? Well, you know what their offense scored more points than the Kansas City Chiefs did this year? Nobody talks about it. So everybody's talking about the greatest, you know, offense around. I think the Niners are pretty good on offense, too. So I think... It's, I was going to ask you, you know, uh, do you do you think that Garoppolo can throw a lot if he has to, Rex? Because he hasn't had to because of the great running game. Do you think he has that in him and what you've seen on tape? I think he has it in him. And like I say, Michael, this, this has been a, uh, a very uh, effective offense. If they need to throw it, they'll throw it. You know, it comes down... We, we've seen time and time again, what quarterback has more fourth quarter comeback wins this year than Jimmy Garoppolo. You guys can answer because I don't think there's anybody in the league with more fourth quarter comeback wins. So to me, he, he's done it in those situations, and I think he's a much better player than people give him credit for. It seems a shame to have one game really define a coach's legacy, but just how big would this be for Andy Reid to finally win this one? We're going to see an unbelievable, like, the emotions. He's, this, this guy, uh, because I, I, I can just imagine, you put everything into it as a coach. And for, what, 20 years now, 21 years, whatever it is, and he hasn't, as good as he's been, he's never, you know, had, had that ring, you know, won that ring. If, if they win this game, it's, he's going to be overcome with it. And I, I truly believe that's, that's what's going to happen in this game. If, if, if they win, it's, it's going to be so emotional for them. And, uh, you know, in a way, I really want to see, see this happen. You know, I, I think as, as a coach, lifelong coach, I, this is what you want to see. And he's been – this is a, a, a no-brainer Hall of Fame coach. I don't think he needs this thing to validate it, but I'd, I'd sure like to see him win one. Did you feel challenged, Rex, when you coached against him? Did you look at him as an offensive guy that was equal to your defensive prowess? Uh, you know what? As, as a coach, you don't allow yourself that. You, you don't. Okay. Like, you go in there thinking, look, if I went against Bill Belichick, I recognize that's the best coach ever. But I'll be damned if he's going to be better than me that day. And that's how I approach it. Andy Reid's a phenomenal coach. Belichick's phenomenal. There are, there are a lot of great coaches. But, no, as a competitor in you, you never allow that. It's almost like going into a championship fight. If you think you're going to get beat, you're going to get beat. I never walked into, into a uh, stadium thinking I would get beat by anybody. Now, you know, Rex, I, I don't just come on the air and, and, and just shoot, you know, shoot from the hip. I, I'm studying film all day. And, and what I picked up uh, from the 49ers, Rex, is that I think they've stolen your sting package without giving you any kind of credit. <laughs> it doesn't matter to me. <laughs> but you know what's funny? By the Bart, way, Bart gave me that yeah, one. Bart can tell you that because we laugh about it. And, and really what it is is, you know, Seattle back in the day, this that Seattle cover. Man, those dudes spent a month studying us and, and ran it. And, and I just laughed, you know. But I don't need to say it. People have been stealing from, you know, uh, 
uh, from stuff that, that, that I came up with a million years ago. And like I said, my thing, it's okay. I used to steal from Dick LeBeau myself. So, it, you know, that's fine. And, and I think it's, you know, they don't give me credit. I used to give uh, credit to Dick LeBeau. But in a way, it's, uh, you know, it's a real compliment. You know, and I see it, and, and quite honestly, Helen played it better than we did. <laughs> you know, so uh, <laughs> you know, I got to give them credit for it. We're we'll talking with Rex Ryan here. <laughs> oh, is it important? No, I'm good. You, I'm you just have to kidding. take it. All right. So I, before we let you go, you, you're you're in Miami uh, doing all your shows. Is it tough to be there? I know that you probably want to be coaching. Is it tough to be that close to a place that you want to be? No, I mean, I, I think uh, I never go to the game. You know, that's okay. that's something that, you know, the only time I ever went was when, you know, either my dad was coaching in it or my uh, my brother was coaching in a game. So, which happened quite frequently. You know, we were, we were, we were lucky. We went to six of them. But, right. yeah, I, wouldn't, I couldn't stand it. Um, I wanted to be there. You know what I mean? And so, no, it's hell no. I don't, I don't go to the game. Even now, I'm not even in the business. I'm not coaching again, and, and it's and it's it's like no, I, I can't allow myself to to ever go to it, you know, because it's so it's so special. You want to be there yourself. Is there? You were a great head coach, Rex, and we were talking about how obviously this Jets team has not returned to where they were with you. If the opportunity came up and there was the right spot to be a D coordinator again, would you do it or would you just not go back? No, uh, I don't think so. I don't have anything to prove. And I think, you know, I, I've got a great life right now. Um, I think the only way I get back into coaching is to be a head coach. And, um, you know, and that sure doesn't look like it's going to happen in any tech suit. I'll tell you what, Rex, I don't think you, I don't, you probably don't care, but you have really nailed it this year on TV. I yeah. mean, it, you're really a great watch on that Sunday show. So, you know, sit back and enjoy yourself. You're really good at this. Well, I appreciate it. You know, it's, I got a great group, man. I mean, from, you know, Sam Ponder, Randy Moss, Bruski, Matt Hasselback, uh, and, and everybody behind the scenes. It, it's been a lot of fun. You know, it was a learning experience. Uh, I think at first I just kind of showed up. I was pissed that I wasn't coaching, I think. But as this thing right. got going, I, I took pride in the in the uh, giving the fans a, a perspective mm -hmm. that maybe they don't get from from uh, you know from other people. Rex, do you think because you won't get another opportunity to be a head coach that allowed you to be more opinionated, or would have you you been just as opinionated anyway? You guys know me. <laughs> you know, yeah. I'm just gonna let it fly yeah. and be myself. I've done that all my life, and. I, I, I it's the only way it. you know, yeah, right? and I think I'd be a, such a phony if I did it any other way. Well, well, last one, Notre Dame, USC, some massive college program wants to bring you in to take over everything. Would you consider it? I mean, you consider anything, but I, 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 I don't think that's ever going to happen. And uh, you know, because they're going to sit back and say, "Oh, you don't have college experience." Yeah, I, I, here's the experience I have. I coach men all my life, not a bunch of young kids. You know, so it's a hell of a lot harder and, uh, you know, coaching in the NFL than it would be in college. And, and I think that's why when you see, and, and I'm not saying I, I do it, but when you see a Pete Carroll, the success he had going back to college, uh, Nick Saban, it's so much easier to go back. You're so much more ahead of all these college coaches. It's not even close. You know, these college programs are running one protection. Well, trust me, I can beat that in my sleep. But it's, and that's why I'm like, well, because I've, I've been asked that before. Somebody's asked me about coaching in college. I think that would be great to come back uh, and do the football part of it. But I don't think I can handle, you know, kissing some 18-year-old's uh, butt all day trying to recruit him. I, I don't think that would be up my alley. Yeah, but the mom and dads would love you, Rex. Well, I can tell you this: I would try to take care of their kid. That that be that be the thing I would do and and treat him as my own. But it's I used to actually love recruiting back in the day, but I just don't see it anymore. Great stuff, Rex. Thanks so Thank much. Have so a great much. weekend. All right, guys, take care.